Today we want to try and beat every single Pokemon champion and there is a lot of them now using Brock's anime team. I asked and you guys voted and chose Brock for our next challenge. He has a good variety of Pokemon to choose from like Ludicolo, Steelix and Blissey with good move coverage as well. We are also going to be making this harder for ourselves this time and let me explain why in the rules. If a Pokemon faints, it's classed as dead for the rest of the challenge. I'm only using Brock's Pokemon in battle. I won't use any held items or items in battle. I'll use each feature involved if it's available to Brock's team, like Mega Evolution or Z moves. And finally, I won't level past the champion's highest level Pokemon. As a side note, I won't be playing remakes of the same champion, so if we play Red, we won't play Fire Red for an example. Let's get started. First up is Pokemon Yellow, and we have the champion for this game, Blue. We only have access to five Pokemon, and two of them being first forms. Let's give it a shot. His usual lead is Sandslash, and we lead with our Geodude. Sandslash outspeeds and hits an Earthquake, doing a lot more damage than I thought it would. We retaliate with our own Earthquake and only do about half, so we have to switch now. We swap into our Golbat on the incoming Earthquake, but he goes for a Fury Swipes, but he misses. We outspeed and can finish off Sandslash with a Mega Drain. His next Pokemon is Alakazam, and I don't want to take a Psychic type move, so we swap into our monster that is Chansey. He critical hits a Psychic and it doesn't do too much to us because of our insane HP stat. Alakazam then goes for a Recover and we Ice Beam and we get the Freeze. Alakazam never falls out. So a couple more ice beams and we take him down. Next up is Executor. We outspeed it and hit an ice beam doing solid damage as thankfully he misses his hypnosis. So we take him out the next turn with another ice beam. Cloyster is up next and we've got great move coverage on Chansey. So a Thunderbolt takes him down in just one move. Ninetales is his fifth Pokemon and he goes for a fire spin trapping us and not allowing us to attack. This goes on for a few turns and Ninetales then finally decides to tail whip us as we hit a Thunderbolt doing close to half. I switch here into Onyx as he goes for a Confuse Ray. We outspeed and we don't hit ourselves in Confusion, so we take down Ninetales with an Earthquake, leaving his last Pokemon, Jolteon, but it can't touch Onyx. It hits a Pin Missile doing basically nothing to us and we hit an Earthquake for the one hit knockout on Jolteon, giving us our first champion victory. Let's move on to Generation 2. Lance is a champion in Generation 2 and I think Blissey is going to be really good here as it has access to Ice Beam which destroys his team. Gyarados is his lead and we lead with our powerhouse Blissey. We outspeed weirdly enough and hit a Thunderbolt and Gyarados being four times weak to electric gives us an easy knockout to start off the fight. He sends out a level 47 Dragonite next and we outspeed again and hit an Ice Beam for another one hit knockout. Third is another level 47 Dragonite but it meets the exact same fate and dies to just a single Ice Beam. This is looking fantastic for Blissey. Aerodactyl comes out and outspeeds us and Wing Attack does a solid chunk of our health as our Ice Beam takes him out in just a single attack again. We're getting pretty close to a Blissey sweep. Out comes Charizard, and I opt to swap into Geodude to give other some Pokemon a chance. His flamethrower does an okay amount, but our rock slide is too much for him, and we get the one hit KO on Charizard, leaving his last Pokemon, his ace, a level 50 Dragonite. Thinking Geodude is quite bulky, I stay in on the Outrage, and we're not. So I make a massive misplay here and we lose our first team member, Geodude. That's our first death of the run, that sucks. We go into Steelix now and we tank Outrage really nicely and we can hit him back with a Rock Slide, doing close to half. Dragonite gets confused but still hits another Outrage, bringing us to nearly half. We exchange moves once again and then a final Rock Slide, Steelix takes down Dragonite, giving us a victory over Lance. It honestly sucks I lost Geodude this early but I misplayed and should have stayed in and sweat with Blissey. Let's move on to Generation 3. Pokemon Ruby's champion is Steven, with Rock and Steel types being his speciality. We now have a Ludicolo and a Marsh Tomp, so I think we have enough coverage to deal with his team. It's Skarmory versus Fortress. He goes for spikes and we set up our own spikes. He aerial aces us, but we tank it very well, so we can get up three laser spikes, so his team will get hurt on entry. We go to about half and we rapid spin away his spikes. Then we need to switch as we can't really hurt Skarmory. We go into our Sudden Woodle as he also swaps into his Armaldo. He takes about 25% from spikes and hits Sudder Woodle for a water pulse doing solid damage. We hit a rock slide and deal with our Maldol in just one attack. Skarmory comes back out but we know fire punch. He poisons us as we connect our attack but he's pretty bulky defensively and he tanks it reasonably well. He hits his steel wing taking us to 57 HP as we fire punch again. Unfortunately with toxic damage we can't stay in any longer and have to swap. So we go into Blissey and his steel wing does great damage as defensively we're not that bulky. He 
sets up spikes and we take down the steel bird with a single flamethrower. Metagross is his next Pokemon of choice and we won't really take attacks well off this thing so we have to swap again. I go into Steelix as we are defensively bulky and a Meteor Mash and Spikes does about 20% to us. He hits an Earthquake next and we tank it. We fire off our own Earthquake but don't quite get the knockout so his Berry activates and Steven full restores. So we hit another Earthquake taking him all the way back down. I opt to stay in hoping he doesn't critical hit us and he doesn't. So we live on 26 HP and take down this monster threat with an Earthquake. Agron is his next Pokemon and we swap into Ludicolo to take the attack. It does basically nothing to us and we hit a Surf for the knockout in return. Cradilly is his fifth Pokemon and an Ice Beam does solid damage taking him to the red as this Sludge Bomb does a big chunk to us. So one more move and down goes Cradilly. This leaves his final Pokemon, Claydol. I don't think we can one hit KO it so I swap to Marsh Stomp expecting a Psychic move but he goes for an Earthquake instead. He sets up a Light Screen as our Waterfall does about a quarter to him. He then sets up a Reflect the next turn and we bring him to under our half. His Earthquake does great damage as we keep Waterfalling. Steven Full restores as we just keep going for Waterfalls. We take another Earthquake that brings us to the red and we get him pretty low too so we have to swap now. We go into Fortress and take damage from Spikes and Earthquake putting us in the yellow. We take another Earthquake and hit a Giga Drain but it's still in pitiful damage. Steven Full restores again and we just keep exchanging moves until we're both back down in the yellow. I swap into Blissey on an Earthquake and it does a huge chunk to us. Light Screen wears off though so we take another Earthquake that puts us on only 36 HP and we soft boiled up. His Earthquake brings us up back down and we fire enough an ice beam for the knockout beating steven honestly claydol was a bulky tank at the end so let's move on to our next champion wallace is our next champion for emerald his speciality is water types so it does have the potential to be a scary battle for us but i think we can cope with our coverage so his lead is scary as always it's a whale lord we lead off with ludicolo probably our best answer to wallace's team we fake out for some chip damage and the following turn we giga drain and it's doing a huge chunk of damage to whale it's nearly a one hit KO, but he lives and sets up the rain. Wallace is going to full restore here definitely, so we hit another Giga Drain bringing him all the way back down to the red. That means we can take down Waylord without taking any damage which is great, but we are struggling for PP on our grass move now. He sends out Tentacruel and our answers to this are pretty limited. We go into Blissey but a Sludge Bomb is doing huge damage to us. He poisons us as we Thunderbolt and we get the critical hit for the one hit knockout. I'm kind of glad we got some luck there, this thing was a problem. Outfit is Ludicolo. I stay in and Thunderbolt him for good damage as he starts double teaming. Poison damage is racking up so we swap into Crobat here. He goes to a plus two evasion now with another double team but Crobat hits an air cutter to deal with Ludicolo. Fourth is Milotic. I stay in and Giga Drain but we are doing practically nothing to him as his Ice Beam is doing nearly half. I get off a little bit more damage with Giga Drain as his Ice Beam brings us to just a sliver. We have to switch now so I go back into Ludicolo. We fake out to bring him to the yellow and activate his Citrus Berry. A Giga Drain takes him to the red, but my lot it recovers, negating our damage. We've got to switch again as we're out of grass PP, so we go into Blissey. He recovers to full HP. My lot it hits the surf, but it's not doing too much, so we can soft boiled and recover a lot of our missing HP. The next few turns are just stalling. We settled the sun to reduce his water moves, and then we can fire off Solar Beam, which is doing about half to him. It's quite a long fight full of full restores, soft boiled, and solar beams. But eventually we take down my lot it with Blissey. Fifth is Whisk Cash. I heal again and Whiskash boosts his special defense with Amnesia. We set up the sun and he boosts again with another Amnesia. We Solar Beam but he's got enough boost to just survive one. He Earthquakes us for nearly half and we take him out with another Solar Beam, leaving only Gyarados left. He Dragon Dances boosting his attack and his speed but he's four times weak to Electric. So one Thunderbolt from Blissey gets us through Wallace without any deaths. It's time to move on to Sinnoh. Cynthia is the champion of Sinnoh and she has a strong team with a lot of coverage. We match up reasonably well against most things though so let's give it a shot. Her lead is Spirit Tomb and we have Foratress. We take a Dark Pulse pretty well and set up Stealth Rocks. The next turn he flinches us and we go to the red after we get up two layers of spikes. Now we swap into Blissey and can tank anything this does to us. We flamethrow and get the burn and then we both just exchange moves as Cynthia full restores. On our Thunderbolt though she swaps into Garchomp. We can't stay in versus this thing at all so we swap to Steelix on the Brick Break. Garchomp's Earthquake does great damage to us as our 
Lars takes him to his berry. We can't take another hit, so we swap into Crowbat for free on the incoming earthquake. We are faster and poison fang him, but it does nothing. He dragon rushes Crowbat for solid damage, and we go for a wing attack as he misses a Giga impact that would probably end Crowbat. We wing attack again, bringing him to the red, and he misses another attack, meaning Crowbat can kill Garchomp. Thankfully, we got through Garchomp relatively easy. Spirit Tomb is back out now, but it takes damage from rocks and spikes. We hit a wing attack, just missing out on the knockout as his sidekick brings us to the red. One more wing attack and down goes Spirit Tomb. Out next is Togekiss. We U-turn into our tank, Blissey, as he sidekicks. Then he Aura Spheres us as we soft boil back up our missing HP. We can then Ice Beam for great damage and Cynthia full restores it, but Blissey is too strong for Togekiss, so we take it out while we are at just under half. Lucario is out and he Earthquakes, bringing us to only 22 HP as we soft boiled for more HP. I stay in here and hit a flamethrower, nearly getting the knockout, but we have to swap now. So we swap into Crowbat on what I thought would be an Earthquake, but Cynthia heals him. So then we U-turn into Marsh Tomp on the sidekick. He hits an Aura Sphere, bringing us very low, but we can take him out with an Earthquake. Roserade is next, and our only answer really at this point is Ludicolo. He Shadow Balls us for good damage, and then we fake out for a little bit more chip damage. Thankfully, we outspeed, and a nice punch finishes off Roserade, leaving only Milotic left. He sets up an Aqua Ring, and we go for a Swords Dance, so just one Seed Bomb deals with Milotic and defeats Gem Force Champion. I fully expected to lose a team member in this fight, but I think we played it pretty well. Let's move on to Generation 5. First up in Generation 5 is Alder, and like Cynthia, he has a wide range of Pokemon with good type variety. But first, 98.5% of you are not subscribed yet, which makes sense as I'm a pretty new channel, so subscribe down below if you like Pokemon. Thank you. His lead is the Selgore, and we lead off of our amazing Blissey, who immediately dodges an attack. Flame throws the Selgore and burns him. We swap into Foratris on the full restore and we take a Focus Blast, but we don't take it that well. So we set up Stealth Rocks and swap back into Blissey. He goes for a me first, but that fails, and we dodge a Focus Blast and flamethrower him again for huge damage. A Selgore does nothing to us and Blissey takes him down with no issues. Drudigon is out and we have Ice Beam. We get the freeze, but he falls out instantly and paybacks us for big damage as we take him out the next turn with an Ice Beam. A Scavalier is four times weak to one flamethrower and Blissey deals with him as well. Volcarona time and it takes about half from Stealth Rock damage, but we've got to swap into Ludicolo, but it's on a Bug Buzz, which was a misplay from me. And that takes us to the red. I then fake out, but he's got Flame Body, so then we take a burn damage to only 11 HP. I nearly lost Ludicolo for absolutely nothing. We go into Marsh Stomp as he Hyper Beams us, but we deal with it pretty nicely. So on the turn he recharges, we can knock it out of an Earthquake. Bufalon is next, and I swap into Crobat, hoping he goes for an Earthquake, but he head charges us for massive damage, and takes a little bit of recoil too. So we U-turn for more chip damage into him, and go into Steelix. He stone edges us, but we tank it extremely well. He Earthquakes us next, but it's not a problem for Steelix, and we Iron Tail, but don't do enough for the knockout. He Earthquakes us again, and Critical hits us, putting us on only 9 HP, as our Iron Tail takes him out. His last Pokemon is Vanillix, so we swap into Blissey. He sets up a Light Scream, and we just exchange flamethrowers and blizzards, but Blissey is far too powerful, and we take down Alder. Let's move on to our next generation 5 champion. Iris is our next champion, and the majority of her Pokemon are dragons. So once again, Blissey is going to be a Pokemon we rely on here. She leads off with Hydreigon, and we lead with Ludicolo. We fake out for a bit of chip damage, and he Dragon Pulses us for decent damage after. We hit an Ice Punch, and we get the Freeze turn 1, so I go for a Sword Stance. But unfortunately, he falls out straight away, and takes us to 69 HP, before we take him out with an Ice Punch. Haxorus has a Focus Sash, so I'm not about to lose Ludicolo. We swap into Crobat on the next scissor and then hit a Poison Fang, but it does very little damage and he sets up a Dragon Dance. His Jewel Chop does great damage to us as we take him to blow half with a Wing Attack. We swap into Foratris on the Jewel Chop and tank it reasonably well. He Earthquakes us, bringing us to the yellow as our Gyro Ball doesn't quite do enough damage to take him out. Iris is going to heal him now, so I Gyro Ball again on the heal and we do nearly half. We live another Earthquake and Gyro Ball again. He's at a plus one attack and speed, so nothing on our team really wants to take a hit from this thing. Not even Steelix can swap in. So I choose to sacrifice Foratris so we can get a clean switch in. You did well this run Foratris, thanks. Now we go into Blissey 
and an earthquake takes us all the way to 113 HP as we can finish it off with an ice beam. Druddigon's next, but we outspeed and heal up with soft boiled. But his rock slide is doing nearly the same as we are healing. So I swap into Steelix on the rock slide. He focus blasts us for a nearly one shot as our iron tail does over half. Our team is getting destroyed. I swap into Marsh Stomp and he connects another focus blast, but we eat it. We can then kill it with a single ice punch. Agron comes out, but we outspeed this also and one earthquake takes him down. Lapras is next and it hits an ice beam for solid damage as our rock slide does roughly half. We have to swap now, so I go into Blissey and we tank every move it has, so we heal up on it. We go for a Thunderbolt, taking down Lapras. This leaves her last Pokemon, Archeops. Its rock slide nearly takes us out as we soft boil. I opt to stay in and we just survive on 11 HP and our ice beam takes it to blow half, activating its ability defeatus, so his attacks won't do much to us now. However, looking at our team, everything is insanely low. We might lose another Pokemon here. I go into Crobat, but Archeops' Dragon Claw does so little to us and we survive. We outspeed it too, meaning Crobat can end Archeops with a Steel Wing. That was a tough fight. Let's move on to Gen 6. Gen 6 and we have Diantha as the champion. We've swapped out our Foratress now with Sudderwood Ult, so let's see how we do. Her lead is Horlucha and we send out Steelix. He fly impresses us, but it does little damage, so we set up our Stealth Rocks. He fly impresses us again and we hit a Stone Edge for just over half. He fly impresses us again as our second Stone Edge takes down Horlucha. Second is Gudra. Either a Muddy Water or a Focus Blast is coming, so I swap into Marsh Tom. We dodge a Focus Blast, luckily. He then Dragon Pulses us for good damage damage and we ice punch for a massive chunk. Diantha full restores but our ice punch freezes him this time so I take my opportunity quickly and go into Ludicolo. Here we set up a swords dance taking us to a plus two attack. We swords dance again so now we're at a plus four and he falls out and hits a dragon pulse. So now we ice punch Gudra for the knockout. Tyrantrum is rock and dragon type so after stealth rocks it has no chance to live an ice punch and down he goes. Aurorus is next but the ice dinosaur can't live a seed bomb giving us a one hit knockout out on that as well. Galgeist has yet to land a hit on us ever and unfortunately this run is the same and he goes down to a single ice move, leaving only her God of War left. She mega evolves and hits a Moonblast, but it doesn't KO us, meaning one Seed Bomb from our plus four attack Ludicolo beats Diantha Generation 6. It's time to fly off to Alola. How is the person we fight to become champion here in Alola? His Raichu is looking like a threat and so is the Tauros. So first up is the Raichu and it is a problem. So we lead with Marsh Tom. We take a Psychic to about 50% HP and can get the one hit knockout with an Earthquake, taking care of that huge threat. Next up is Leafeon and we have an easy switch into Crow about here. Leafeon goes for a quick attack as our cross poison takes him pretty low. He goes for a move though I loathe, a baby doll eyes, and we U-turn back into Steelix. I go for Stealth Rocks here as Halful restores his Leafeon. We swap back into Crowbar and he yet again goes for a baby doll eyes lowering our attack again. We go for a cross poison and critical hit putting him on a sliver as he then goes for a charm lowering our attack even more. But we can U-turn here for the knockout and we go back into Steelix. He sends out Incineroar and a fire move is coming potentially even a Z move, so we're in trouble. We don't have a switch into this thing. Sudowoodo can potentially take it, but then we're in the same predicament. So I go into Marsh Tomp and he flare blitz us. We survive it and he takes a bit of recoil. I choose to sacrifice our Marsh Stomp here to a Darkest Lariat. You can rest easy now, buddy. We can go into Sudowoodo and we can live any move as we have the ability sturdy. His Earthquake does just over half to us and we connect to Stone Edge. With Stealth Rocks and Flare Blitz recoil, we can take him down. Tauros is out next and it lowers our attack. We swap into Crobat on the Earthquake and I go for Roost as I know from past experience he's just going to double edge. So we stole him out with Roost and let him take himself low from recoil before he gets to a point where we can take down Tauros with a cross poison. Crabominable is next and we swap into Steelix on the Ice Hammer. It still does quite a lot of damage to us as it has a really good attack stat. We we take another Ice Hammer and then we go for our Z move, Corkscrew Crash. There is no way he's living it, so we get the one hit knockout with the Z move. That leaves only Noivern left. We have an answer to this though with Blissey, so we swap into her on the incoming Dark Pulse and then we can get the one hit knockout with an Ice Beam. We've lost three Pokemon so far now going into the Switch games, let's move on.
First up is Trace from Let's Go Pikachu. His Pokemon only have three moves, but he has good type variety and a Mega. We unfortunately only have four Pokemon now for this fight. His lead is Pidgeot and we lead off with Onyx. We have really good AVs in this game, so I'm hoping it's enough to win. He Mega evolves and goes for an Air Slash that does absolutely nothing to us. And we set up Stealth Rocks. He Air Slashes again, but he's still doing nothing. And one Rock Slide destroys Pidgeot. He brings out Vileplume next and we swap into our Chansey as he sets up reflect. We outspeed actually and a flamethrower takes Vileplume to the red. He goes for a solar beam but he has to charge it so one more flamethrower takes down Vileplume. His next Pokemon is Marowak and I swap into our Golbat on the Brit Break and it does absolutely nothing to us. We go for a Mega Drain and that obliterates him as well. Jolteon is out and our obvious swap is back to Onix as he can't do a thing to him. So his Pin Missile does absolutely nothing and Onix picks up another knockout with an Earthquake. We swap into Chansey on the Slowbro and we take the Surf. We can fire off a Thunderbolt and that takes care of Slowbro, leaving only Rapidash left. But after Rocks, our Thunderbolt takes him to the red, as his Flare Blitz does a massive chunk of damage to us, but he goes down to his own recoil. That went a lot better than I thought it would, and I'm glad, as we are slowly running out of Pokemon. Let's move on to Generation 8. The champion for Sword and Shield is Leon. His team is looking pretty scary for us. I've got to play this right for his Gigantamat Charizard, and we sub in Krogunk for our Lost Marsh Tom. So our lead is Steelix into Aegislash. We set up Stealth Rocks, it's going to do 50% to his Charizard. So Aegislash goes for a King Shield turn 1, so that's ideal for us, and we get up our rocks for free. He's faster, so he comes out of his stance first and hits a Shadow Ball for solid damage to Steelix, but an Earthquake kills him back. This now brings in Haxorus. He's a huge threat to us. I swap into Crobat on the incoming Earthquake, and then we go for a Cross Poison that takes him to half. He goes for an Outrage that takes us really low, and then we swap back into Steelix. His Outrage does very little to us, but he gets confused on only turn two. So we swap again into Crowback on the Earthquake. I go for a Brave Bird, which does just enough damage to KO Haxorus, and we survive the recoil. Dragapult is his third Pokemon, but our Blissey is a solid check to this, and I go into her. We tank the Thunderbolt and Dragapult then Dragon Breaths us. We hit an Ice Beam for solid damage, nearly getting the KO. Leon full restores, so we just Ice Beam to bring him back down. He Dragon Breaths us again, and thankfully, no Paralyze, so we take him down with another Ice Beam. Mr. Rhyme Time, and he Teeter Dances us, confusing Blissey, as we hit ourselves in Confusion. He Psychics us, and we snap out of Confusion, and then we hit a Flamethrower, taking him to the red. He then goes for another Teeter Dance, but thankfully, we don't hit ourselves again, and we take him down down with a flamethrower. Inteleon is fifth and she goes for a tearful look, lowering our attack and special attack. We hit ourselves in confusion anyhow. Her snipe shot is doing nothing though to us and we hit a thunderbolt for massive damage. Then we finally break out of confusion at 43 HP and soft boil to heal ourselves. Inteleon tearful looks us again but thankfully our thunderbolt takes her out. This leaves his last Pokemon Charizard. Steelix isn't in the next games so it's time for us to use him as a sacrifice. Charizard Gigant to maxes and takes down Steelix with a max airstream boosting his speed. But this is what I need, a clean swap into Sudder Woodo, whose nickname Kabuto. We Dynamax and take a max overgrowth, not very well though, but after Stealth Rock doing half to him, a max rocks fall takes out Charizard, giving us a win over Leon. Now onto the last games, Scarlet and Violet. The last champion for us is Jeta. We are now limited on our selection, but we can afford to sacrifice Pokemon, as this is the last fight. Her lead is Esparta and we lead off with Vulpix. She sets up a Reflect, boosting the team's defense as we Dark Pulse for over half. Her Lumina Crash brings us down to the yellow as we take out the Ostrich with another Dark Pulse. Out next is Avalug. We naturally outspeed it and we one-hit knockout Avalug with a Flamethrower. Third is King Gambit and I don't expect the one-hit knockout and I'm happy to let Vulpix go down but we get a critical hit and that gives Vulpix another KO. The loser is fourth and it goes for a priority Aqua Jet, adding Vulpix to the death list. I go into Krogun because I'm sure I outsped this last time, but we don't outspeed it now. And a psychic cut destroys us, so we've got absolutely no use out of Krogunk this run. We go into Blissey as she critical hits a liquidation on us, and our Thunderbolt brings Veluza to the yellow. We soft boiled now to try and get some HP back as Veluza just keeps on going for liquidation. And it's a good job we did soft boiled as she critical hits us again, and we take it down with a Thunderbolt. Golgo is fifth, it outspeeds us and KOs our MVP of the 
the run with a Horn Leech. Blissey has been so good for us. I'm glad I got to use this Pokemon. We send out Ludicolo and now we go for a Sword Stance to raise our attack as Gogol bulks up raising his attack and defense. We Ice Punch and do just over half as his Horn Leech does massive damage to us and restores some of his HP. Thankfully, we still do just enough with Ice Punch to get the KO. That leaves only Glamora left, a familiar matchup. She terrestrializes into a pure rock type and we are faster. So a plus two boosted seed bomb ends Glamora in just one attack, beating Jita and beating every single Pokemon champion with Brock's team. This was another super fun run to do. It was quite challenging at some parts, but thankfully we had an absolute tank in Blissey and another tank in Steelix. We managed to do it with only four deaths up to the last fight too, so I'm pretty happy about that. I'm definitely not a pro when it comes to keeping Pokemon alive. Would you guys like to see the same rules apply to future challenges we use with teams? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new and enjoy the Pokemon content. As always, if you're still here, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.